Hi friends, how are you doing today? Today we're going to survey some beautiful artifacts from 4th century BC. These were among the more than 19,000 artifacts unearthed in the 1970s from Hebei Sheng Pingshan Xian Zhongshan Guo Muzang, or in English, they were unearthed from the mausoleum of King Cuo of the Zhongshan Kingdom, which existed during the Warring States period, located in Pingshan County, Hebei Province. And uh, this mausoleum was dated to the late 4th century BCE. It is around this time, during the 4th and 3rd centuries BCE, that large mausoleums became fashionable among the Eastern Zhou warlords. The impressive amount of artifacts unearthed at this mausoleum can be characterized by different period styles. Um, an interesting note from Professor Wu Hong's work, which actually um, most of today's video is based on, is that when Chinese archaeologists opened King Tuo's mausoleum, they were surprised to find that the tomb's interior had a complex color scheme. The walls were painted white, red pigments covered the surface of the bronze vessels, and the pottery spirit articles were all shining black. The Book of Rites, or Li Ji, offers a possible reference for this scheme. And here I quote, Under the sovereigns of Xia, they preferred what was black. Under the Yin dynasty, they preferred what was white. Under the Zhou dynasty, they preferred what was red. And so while on the topic of taking inspiration from the past, Professor Wu Hong in his book brought up another interesting note, um, which is that partly with um, these period references in mind, we can divide the artifacts that were found in this mausoleum into three broad categories. The first category would be temple ritual vessels, an example here, um, made of pure bronze and sometimes bearing long commemorative inscriptions. This first category could be generally referred to as Ji Qi, or sacrificial vessels, and they derive inspiration from Western Zhou temple vessels. The second category would be utilitarian objects, such as lamps, tables, screens, um, and these were brilliantly inlaid. This second category is generally referred to as sheng qi, or utilitarian objects from the former possession of the dead. These derive inspiration from exotic objects um, from non-Chinese cultures. The third category would be soft and low-fired black pottery vessels with impractical shapes and decorated with uh, beautiful patterns, which give a solemn impression and emit a ghostly aura. This third category could be generally referred to as ming qi, roughly translated to spirit vessels. These vessels could attest to a revival of the spirit vessel pottery art tradition, which existed in Longshan culture over a millennium prior. In today's video, we are going to zoom in and look at three exquisite examples from the second category of artifacts. Sheng qi, or utilitarian objects. All three artifacts that I'm going to show um, are now housed in the Hebei Museum. The first artifact is this Yin Shou Ren Yong Tong Deng, or bronze human shaped lamp. It is 66.4 centimeters tall, and indicated on the schematic here, this lamp is designed to hold three candles. We see two intertwined chi, which together form the stem leading to candles one and two. If you've watched my History of Architecture videos, you might remember my mention of an architectural motif called chi wei. This chi is similar in origin and refers to a snake-like dragon, which in Chinese mythology is one of nine sons of the dragon. It is quite a common motif across traditional Chinese architecture and art. Here on the stem leading to candle three, there's also a pan chi, which it might be hard to see here, but looks to be chasing a monkey. These whimsical beasts form the stems leading to the three candle holders, but it is really the human figure in the middle that connects them all. I love the joyful smile on this human figure. His garment is also very intricately decorated and painted with black and red pigment. The head is made of silver with black gemstones as the eyeballs, which almost bring him alive. The asymmetry and depth in this artifact is also quite remarkable. Candles 1 and 2, which he holds out with his left arm, is cascaded in the foreground, while candle 3, which he holds up with his right arm, is deeper into the depth dimension. Of course, they're also cascaded in the height dimension, and we can only imagine how beautiful this lamp would look with all three candles lit. The second artifact is this Hu Shi Lu Zuo Qi, or golden silver inlaid bronze vessel base with a tiger eating a deer, 
55.5 centimeters long, 22.1 centimeters tall. It has a unique winding S-shaped backbone and is full of energy. The artist very vividly captures the momentum, sense, and thrill of the hunt. It wasn't designed to be viewed from any particular angle. Much to the contrary, viewing from different angles gives slightly different but equally vivid and lively angles, curves, and artistic aesthetics. Another remarkable thing is that the artist is quite faithful to the anatomy of the animals depicted. So for example, the body of the tiger is plump and muscular. Its leg muscles are angular and well-defined. Its butt is slightly raised, characteristic of a pouncing hunter. The head of the tiger is otherwise stiff and tense, but in the lip and cheek region, we see some soft folds. At the same time, the work is clearly infused with artistic and decorative twists. The tiger's eyes are round and exaggerated, and similarly exaggerated is the size of its mouth and the sharpness of its claws. These exaggerated details of the predator is set in stark contrast with the deer's mouth shaped in a pleading howl and uh, the weak curled up legs of the deer. And of course, the gold and silver inlays that pervade the entire piece also makes it an artistic masterpiece. The gold and silver inlays also help accentuate some of the details that we mentioned earlier by, for example, adding texture to the skin. The third artifact is this Tong Tuo Jing Si Long Si Feng Fan, or bronze table frame inlaid with gold and silver, decorated with figures of four dragons and four phoenixes. It is 36.2 centimeters tall and 47.5 centimeters long at the top frame. An interesting note is that this is one of 64 cultural relics that are forbidden to be exhibited abroad. The four dragons, with their long, elegant necks, are located at the four corners of the stand. Looking at it from the side, the top frame, the dragon heads, and the base form a very elegant curve. A super cool detail about the dragons that's more visible from this photo is that if we follow their neck, we can see that below the long neck, the dragon's body is actually divided into two halves, and each half leads to a tail. And the neighboring dragons have their tails beautifully overlapping at the center of the frame edge, and the heads of the four phoenixes stick out in between the overlapping dragon tails. Each dragon also has a third tail that branches off from the left side of its body, and this third tail points towards the center of the stand. The dragons also have a wing on each shoulder, which also points towards the center of the stand. And so this design forms two parts of a structural hierarchy. The inner part of the structural hierarchy is the dome-like structure that's formed from the wings and the center pointing tails. And this structure hierarchy leads our sight towards the center of the stand, giving a feeling of stability. The outer part of the hierarchy, composed of the outer frame and the intertwining dragon bodies and tails, leads our sight towards the outward pointing dragon heads, giving a fluid open feeling. The inner and outer are merged together in an exquisite artwork that exudes unity, stability, and dignity. Another remarkable thing is that below the top frame, we can see artistic structural support elements that almost resemble the dogon, an architectural support bracket motif, which I mentioned a lot in my architecture videos. So I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at these three artifacts with me. It is a very small sample, considering more than 19,000 artifacts were unearthed from this mausoleum of King Tuo of the Zhongshan Kingdom, which dates to 4th century BCE. Looking at the work of our ancestors never fails to humble me. Just the thought that these exquisite artifacts were fabricated more than 2,000 years ago really makes me rethink the nonlinearity and multidimensionality of what we would like to unfairly distill into the word progress nowadays. I think when we gain something in one dimension, we are losing other things in other dimensions. And sometimes it's worth once in a while to reflect on what is gained and lost in what dimensions instead of hiding behind this blanket term that we sometimes call progress. 
I also want to plug a wonderful app called iMuseum, which has crowdsourced images from museums across the world. The three artifacts I showed today are from Hebei Museum, and we can use that as an example in a short demo of the app. So here I am navigating within this huge catalog of museums to Hebei province and then to Hebei Museum. There is a brief description of the highlights of the museum, and here we see the gold and silver inlaid bronze vessel base with a tiger eating a deer that we talked about in this video. For most Chinese museums, we can also navigate to particular exhibits. So here I'm navigating to permanent exhibits at this museum, and ta-da, we see um, <laughs> the stand with four dragons and four phoenixes. There are also crowdsourced images here of the exhibit, and I'm scrolling quickly, but you can see that there are many artifacts you can look at, which I didn't mention, including many examples from the other two categories of artifacts, spirit vessels, mingqi, and temple ritual vessels, jiqi. And of course, here is the first artifact that we talked about today, the bronze human-shaped lamp. So truly an amazingly therapeutic app that you can waste a whole day on. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.